We are jumping into episode two of our sound, My NBA, we'll call it from now on. And we're gonna start out with the trade. So Rudy Gay is the first to go. You guys know we got a lot of contracts that are expiring. So I ended up finding this trade for Daniel Gafford. He's on a three year deal. He's only 22 years old. So I really wanna get a little bit younger. I know I'm kind of contradicting myself by drafting a ton of veterans who are older, but we mainly did it because of their contracts. So we're gonna execute this trade here for Daniel Gafford. You can see we're gonna get a much younger player. He's only 22 years old, got three years left on his deal. And eventually I want him to take over that center role. So that's someone that we're gonna be developing as we move down the line. Now let's take a quick look at what our roster is looking like. As you can see, we got Daniel Gafford over here, not starting and we also have Harry Giles. So this is something interesting for this team. I wanna get rid of some of my other centers like Ennis Cantor. He doesn't really have a role on the squad. I want my younger guys getting minutes and his contract isn't too crazy. So I put him in the trade finder as well and out came Doug McDermott. I, again, he is not a center, so we can move McDermott to that small forward slash power forward role and open up some playing time for my younger guys that we already have. And he's making two more million per year uh, than Ennis Cancer, so we can take advantage of that little extra cap space that we're gonna open up next season. So we'll execute this trade and bring in Doug McDermott as we take another look here. We can see that Serge Ibaka is pretty much next on the chopping block. I want to get all my older guys out of here, so Daniel Gafford and Harry Giles can get minutes again. Two young centers with, I think, pretty good potential, man. I think these guys can be that little one-two combo for defense. Now, in this video, we're going to be playing the Lakers, but first, I did a bit of simulating, and you can see we're currently in the 12th in the conference. Now, if you look at the top right, it actually tells you that, so we don't actually have to check the standings, but we can also look at it here. And we're somewhat in the middle of the pack. I don't know if we can make the playoffs. It's still very early to tell. We got a lot of games left. But somehow the Cavaliers are the number one seed. I don't know. They're 10 and 4. They're clearly having a great start. But let's go ahead and jump into this game against the Los Angeles Lakers. 11 and 3 on the season for the Lakers. Meanwhile, we are 6 and 7 playing on the Lakers home court. And you can see I actually modified the jerseys a little bit. I think I'm going to go ahead and stick with the St. Louis Sound brand. Um, let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think I should switch it to the St. Louis Archers or should I just stick with this St. Louis Sound? It's like a 2K preset. And we can just create jerseys and go on from there. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you guys are thinking. If, it's, if you guys want to see the Archers, if you want to stick with the Sound, and we'll go from there. Now... The Lakers come out and they get a 7-zip start in this game. We are clearly getting rolled right now, and it's not a good look. Okay, so we're going to come out of a timeout. we got to get a good play going here. MPJ coming up off the screen, and Green lights his first three-ball attempt of the game to cut the lead down to four points. Serge Ibaka, you can see he got that mismatch. Every time we have one of these, we got to exploit it as Ibaka gets it to go on the inside slowly but surely working into this Lakers lead. Ricky Rubio looking to set up another player. This time, JJ Reddick coming up off the screen, and he's going to green light a three ball of his own. So you can see we got some offensive firepower in this starting lineup. Defensively, obviously, there's something to be desired. We can all agree on that as Rondo knocks that one down. Lakers take a one point once again. Four minutes left to go in this first as JJ Redick once again coming off the screen and knocking down another jumper. Moving into the second quarter now. Look at MPJ slicing his way through the lane and somehow getting that one to drop in as we extend our lead to five points. Lakers coming back. That's Kyle Kuzma with a nice little lefty finish as the Lakers trying to keep this one close on their home court. Bobby Portis, the tough jumper. I don't know how he made that. I have no idea how that went in, but somehow it did as Mike Michael Porter Jr. taking another screen here, putting that one up. Hey, his jumper is so smooth. I'm actually thinking about putting on my my player during my my career because I'm so used to shooting with it at this point as they get a three ball to knock down there. Less than four minutes to go in the second quarter. Malik Beasley coming off the screen, putting up a very deep three ball. Somehow dropping that one. We'll take it, man, as the Lakers are now down by six points. LeBron says, it's my turn to take over as he gets that little layup to drop in. And we immediately call a timeout. We did not want to risk a run there. Despite that, the Lakers would still tie the game up at 32 apiece. And yes, this game is incredibly low scoring. Both teams only have 32 and we're almost at halftime. It's been a defensive struggle for both sides, honestly. Both teams were just missing so many shots. 
Anthony Davis gets a nice little putback right there as we're about to jump into the second half. We got ourselves a six-point lead, and MPJ comes up with the steal. He's going to kick this one out to Redick, who is spotting up and knocking down that three ball. Man, he is such a treasure to have on his team. When I first drafted him, I'm like, all right, whatever. It's JJ Redick. I don't really know what he's going to do for us, but he's coming and been an offensive weapon for us as Ricky Rubio gets his first three points, and we go up by 12. As you can see, we are having a great time shooting it from deep, which isn't something I thought this team would be good at. I didn't think we had a strength there as MPJ gets another green light. This is real life. We are green lighting like crazy on next gen, aren't we? As LeBron misses that first time, he's going to kick this one out. They get an M1 bucket as the Lakers try to keep this one close. But for real though, I'm having a good time shooting, man. I I'm hitting green lights like nothing. Now, full disclosure, okay, this gameplay is on All-Star. I'm still getting my feet wet on next gen. There's a little, a lot of nuances in the gameplay that are different from current gen. Once you get your hands on the game, you'll know exactly what I mean. But, yeah, this is on All-Star, so I guess that's why you can say we're absolutely rolling the Lakers right now. We're up by 12 points. Four minutes left to go in this third quarter, or under four minutes, as Bobby Porter is going to find MPJ. Another green light. Listen, don't take it away from me. I know it's All-Star, but come on, man. We are hitting greens like nothing. 15 point lead as Anthony Davis throwing down that oop. Lakers, they're really trying to cut into this game, right? They do not want to lose on their home court to a team called the Seattle Sound. Some random expansion team comes into their house and blows them out. I don't know about that as Melton puts up a three. And yes, he knocks that down. As you can see, we are absolutely rolling from the three point line as they're going to put up a three of their own. But Anthony Davis is there for the cleanup. He was a problem for us. We don't really have a big man that can stop big men who are really good, right? Like Anthony Davis, uh, Jokic is going to be a problem. As Daniel Gafford with a big time two hander. Okay, Daniel, I see you making his debut in this game. Now we're going into the fourth quarter and we are up by 20 points. Make that 22 points as JJ Redick gets that layup to drop in. I don't know how we ended up blowing the Lakers out so badly. I know it's be it being all-star and it's a little bit easier. I still expected a somewhat competitive game. I didn't think the Lakers would have absolutely no hope as we're going to put up a three ball here and we miss. Thankfully though, Ibaka on the rebound, the putback, Serge Ibaka. Take a look at this one more time. Look at this. Kyle Kuzma, don't jump, bro. It's a bad idea. Now, obviously, this is 2K. And on 2K, no lead is safe. You guys have heard me say this time and time again. So just because we're up by 21 points and getting an add one bucket there, Serge Ibaka, doesn't mean this game is over. You never know what's going to happen as we're going to move a little bit forward here. Five minutes left to go in this fourth quarter. LeBron James... Feeling very angry right now as he throws that one down and gets an and one bucket of his own. So now it's a 22-point game. At this point, I think our lead is safe. I'm not really too worried about the Lakers making a 20-point run as we come up with a steal here. MPJ gets loose on the fast break, throws it down with the lefty finish. And I think it's safe to say that this game is going to be a wrap. We're going to end up beating the Lakers. So... Honestly, I've had a good time playing 2K21 Next Gen. A little bit of impressions for you guys because this game looks like it's a wrap. So, uh, 2K21, I'm pretty critical about 2K. You guys know that. I did not recommend you guys buying 2K21 on current gen. I don't think it made too much of an improvement over 2K20. In fact, I thought 2K20 was better in some regards. Uh, and then the My League didn't change that much. And there wasn't really too much that would warrant a $60 price tag. Now for 2K21, if you are on the uh, on the edge of buying it for next gen, I gotta tell you guys, it's actually worth it. This game is actually worth it on next gen. Uh, and I'll get into that into a, in another video. But again, if you're on the fence, I've been highly critical of 2K in the past. 2K21 on next gen is definitely a go. Now we end up beating the Lakers in this one, 89 to 78. Super low scoring game, I don't even know how that happened, We the, the Lakers ended up making a slight comeback in that fourth quarter. Almost got it down to single digits, but thankfully we walked away. LeBron James with 22 and 7, Anthony Davis with 21 and 18. Told you guys, he killed us on the glass. That's going to be a problem for us going forward, dealing with big men that can rebound. Michael Porter Jr. with 20 points. He had a very solid game. Didn't shoot amazing from the three-point range, but still, 
he got the job done. JJ Redick with 14 of his own, Bobby Portis with 11 and 6, and Sergi Baca almost had himself a double double. So a very, very solid W for us. That puts us on seven and seven on the season. We are currently 10th in the conference. So our playoff hopes, you know, they're not dashed just yet. Plenty of time left to see what we can do. So that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching as always. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. If you're new here, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.